diversity certainly makes life more interesting. So in this video, I'm going to examine four different types of variation that are responsible for the diversity that you see among individuals in a population. So if you need help in this area, keep watching. So what exactly is variation? So variation is the differences and characteristics between individuals of the same species. So when we're talking about variation, we're looking at the same species more so than different species because you expect that with different species you're going to have diversity because of the differences in genes. So with variation, we're focusing on the differences between the same species. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at four types of variation. So the first type is genetic variation. Then we're going to look at environmental variation and compare the two. And then we're going to look at discontinuous variation and continuous variation. So we're going to break down the differences between these types of variation among individuals of the same species. So why is variation important? So that's another thing that you need to understand. So the importance of variation, it all revolves around the fact that it allows for new combinations of genes in a population. So all of the individuals do not have the same exact genes. And this is advantageous, especially for survival purposes and also for adaptability in changing environments. So for instance, if we look at a crop, a particular species of crops, and if they all have different genes, it is more likely that they can survive in the event of some kind of calamity, a disease, pests coming into the environment. All of the individuals, all of the crops are not going to be, are not going to suffer from the disease because of the differences in the genes. So you may have some that may be weaker and some may be stronger depending on the genes that they have. So that's just a, an example um, as to the importance of variation. So variation is definitely important for survival and being able to adapt in changing environments. If individuals all had the same genes, we all had the same genes and were identical, then that can be an issue when environments change because the entire population is more likely to be affected. So going back to the whole example of crops, so if a disease came into the environment, the entire set of crops there all sharing the same genes will be wiped out. So this is the advantage of variation, of genetic variation. So let's look at the origins of variation. Where, where does variation originate from? So I have this table here showing you three different origins of variation. So the first one, the formation of gametes during meiosis. So we would have looked at cell division earlier in the series. So in meiosis, we have the gametes being formed, the sperm and the egg. So during that process of meiosis, we saw where genetic variation came about. So particularly at the crossing over of chromosomes, and then also during random segregation, or what is also known as independent assortment of the chromosome pairs. So these are two events that occur within meiosis that contributes to genetic variation. So when you have the crossing over of chromosomes, you have an exchange of genetic material. So right off the bat, you can see that there are differences occurring. And then the random segregation. So basically, chromosome pairs would move randomly. There's no particular order in which they would go within the, um, the cell during cell division. So the combination of these events produce differences and therefore variation. So secondly, the combination of genes at fertilization. So fertilization is when you have the sperm fusing with the egg. So you have the sperm from the father, which will contain different genes, and the egg from the mother, they will contain different genes. So at fertilization, when the zygote is formed, you have this whole new set of genes, this whole new combination of genes. So therefore, you would expect that the offspring would grow to be different from the parents. So they would have a different combination of genes, but they would also share some similarities. So that is another origin of genetic variation. And then the third origin would be mutations. So mutations are just spontaneous changes in the genetic material. So this will result in phenotypic changes, so changes in the characteristics of the organisms. 
and mutations can be either inherited or they can be caused by environmental agents. All right, so now you understand the origins of variation. Let's look now at the first one, genetic variation, which is pretty much inherited traits. So these are the genetic differences or the genes that are inherited by an individual from their parents. So basically, what traits do you inherit from your parents? So you're going to inherit some traits that cannot be altered, such as your blood groups. So remember, we looked at ABO blood groups and how they're inherited from your mother and your father. And then there's fingerprint patterns. I mean, you can alter them to a sense if your fingers got burnt. But generally speaking, your fingerprint patterns are inherited. Although individuals, every single individual would have a different, unique, fingerprint. So there's certain patterns as you can see here we have the arch, the loop, the worlds. So those are certain patterns that can run in a particular family. So say your father and your mother may have the loop type of pattern, you may end up having a similar fingerprint pattern. But it doesn't mean that you're going to inherit the exact same genes that would give you the same exact fingerprints as your parents. So just the general patterns. And then as it relates to sex, being male or female, we know that that is definitely inherited. So these are some of the traits that you inherit that cannot be altered. Now let's look at some that can be altered. So hair color for instance. So typically if you're, your parents, they may have dark hair, you know, it's likely that you can inherit dark hair, but you can alter the hair color. You can add some hair dye to it. Similarly with the hair texture, you may inherit these traits from your parents, but you can go and alter them. So you can go and straighten it out, add curls to it, whatever the case is. And then with skin color as well, and eye color. So you can put on some contacts to change your, your eye color. So these are just some example of traits that are inherited. So this is what genetic variation is all about. So the inherited traits, so what you would have inherited from your parents genes that you inherit from your parents. Now let's look at environmental variation. So these are more the acquired traits. So they're often known as acquired traits because these characteristics are influenced by the environment and the lifestyle of the individual. So this would include like the diet, the activities the individual partakes in, exposure to chemicals, UV rays. So these are some of the the different types of factors that can influence an individual's traits or their phenotypes. So let's look at what traits do you acquire? What are some of the traits that you can acquire? So for instance, a suntan. So going back to skin color. So you may have inherited certain genes that would determine your skin color, but if you go on go outside in the sun for a long time, you can end up getting darker skin color. Then you also have obesity, so yes, there are genetic factors that play a role in your weight, but for the most part, obesity has a lot to do with the environment in terms of, well, the lifestyle more so, so what the individual is eating, if they're exercising. And then we have language. So if you, if you are born in a particular country, you are expected that you are going to develop the language of the country. So culture plays a role in environmental variation as well. So athletic skills, mental skills, all of these are acquired. So it's not necessarily there's some special um, intelligent genes that you inherit from your parents and automatically you become intelligent and you have this high IQ. It doesn't operate like that. So these are things that you develop and are these are traits that you would acquire over time based on experience, exposure to different um, cultures, activities, education, all these things that you can consider that will contribute to the particular trait that you develop. So that is environmental variation. So it's what you are acquiring and that would influence the characteristics that you have. So let's look at the skin color for a particular example. So skin color variation. So this is an easy one to look at. So some, so some characteristics in an individual are determined by a combination of genetic and environmental variation. So skin color is a perfect example of that. So in terms of skin color, we know there are wide ranges of skin color. 
Now, there's a genetic component that obviously contributes to the individual's skin color. So this is based on the genes that the individual would have inherited from their parents. So there are certain genes that would determine the amount of melanin. So that's the pigment that gives the color of the skin, the color um, of the skin. So it depends on what type of genes you inherit from your parents that would determine the, the concentration of melanin that you inherit. So obviously the more melanin, the darker the skin tone. So this is where the genetic aspect comes in. So that's the genetic variation part of it. So the genes that control the amount of pigmentation in the skin. So that, that part is inherited. But as we mentioned just now with the environmental factors, so the environmental variation part of it, your skin color is affected by the amount of exposure to sunlight and then obviously your personal choices. So if you want to lighten your skin or darken your skin tone for whatever reason, so bleaching, sun tanning, so all of this is related to the lifestyle, the habits of the individual. So skin color is a perfect example to use when you're talking about the combination of genetic components and environmental components that will contribute to the phenotype of the individual. Now another way to study the, the interactions between genetic components and environmental components would be really to study twins, particularly identical twins. So you can see that there's a combination of factors that would play a role in the phenotypes of the individual. So typically twins would inherit the same genes but they acquire different characteristics as they grow and develop different life cells. So identical twins generally are born with, they have 100% of the same genes that they would have inherited from the parents. So an identical twin actually develops from one egg that has been fertilized by one sperm. And then as it um, starts to divide, it would divide into two separate zygotes. So that is why it would be known as monozygotic twins, the identical twins. So they definitely have the same genes um, during development within the mother's womb. But obviously as they are born and they are exposed to different things growing up, they can acquire different characteristics. So differences in personality, hair length, texture, color, they can choose to do all different types of things with their parents and then their general behaviors. So all of these are differences or different traits that can develop within twins. So identical twins, yes, they generally will share the same physical traits, the same physical characteristics. But for instance, in this case here, obviously one of these twins probably is eating more, maybe not exercising. So yes, they have the same genes, but because of the environment, they acquire different characteristics. So similarly here with this set of twins here, we have differences in hair styles and all that. So twins are good to study when you're examining the influence of both genes and the environmental factors. All right, let's look now at the third type of variation, which is discontinuous variation. So when we're talking about discontinuous variation, the first thing that you should remember is that this type of variation is dealing with traits, characteristics that show clear-cut differences. So they're usually influenced by one or a few genes. So that is discontinuous variation. So now let's look at some of the key things to remember about discontinuous variation. So for the particular trait, the particular characteristic that you're examining, they're usually found in discrete categories. So they're usually not altered by environmental factors because they're strictly controlled by genes. So they're limited to a number of phenotypes. You have the distinct, this goes back to being um, fallen into discrete categories. So you would not expect to be any range where they have intermediates or averages or extremes. So Common examples for discontinuous variation would be blood groups, tongue rolling, eye color, or fingerprints. So a good way to represent these characteristics would be on a bar graph. So this is usually how you represent discontinuous variation. So the bar graph or the bar chart, you typically would see the bars separated, the space in between.
between. So here you're seeing blood types and the percentage of a population with particular blood, blood types. So you can clearly see there are four distinct categories for blood types. So you have A, B, we have A, O, and B. Now, out of these four blood types, you can clearly see that type O is the most common in the population. So based on the graph shown here, and then the least common would be type AB. So you're clearly seeing that this particular trait, blood types, fits into only four categories. So individuals will fit into one of these four categories. So the key thing to remember about discontinuous variation, you either belong to one category or another. So keep that in mind. So discrete traits, discrete categories, influenced by one or few genes. Now, some other examples of discontinuous variation would include things like disorders and genetic defects. So color blindness, dwarfism, sickle cell anemia, albinism. So these are all related to the genes that the individual would have inherited from their parents. So that combination of genes. So basically, you can think of it this way. With discontinuous variation, especially related to the genetic defects, you either have the conditions or you don't. So there's no intermediate states. There's no intermediate. So you're either an albino, as this guy here is, or you're not. You have normal skin pigmentation. So there's no in-between, no intermediate states. So that is another thing to keep in mind when it comes to discontinuous variation. All right, let's go on to look at continuous variation. So in this case now, the characteristics in the individual will fall within a wide range, and they're usually controlled by many genes and environmental factors. So you have a wide range of a particular trait, so the characteristics will show a continuous gradation. So there are no distinct categories. And then the trait is strongly influenced by environmental factors, and you have characteristic that would have intermediates and extremes. And I'm going to show you that shortly when we look at the graph for continuous variation. So con common examples would be height, weight, skin color. You have a wide range of these particular characteristics. So let's look at this line graph or histogram. These are the two options for representing continuous variation on a graph. So you can see we have both shown here. So the line graph is represented by the, the light bluish green line, the curve, and then you have the histogram represented by the peach bars. So these are the two ways to represent continuous variation. So there are no distinct categories. So you have a wide range of the particular trait, and the trait we're looking at in this graph is height. So remember, in a, in a population, there's a wide range of heights. So looking at the graph, you can see that you can go from the shortest individuals to the, to the tallest individuals at this end. So these will represent the extremes. Now in the middle region, that would be more the intermediate traits, the intermediate heights. So you tend to find people falling in more in the intermediate categories. So you have this wide range of heights. So you're going from the shortest individuals to the tallest individuals and then lying in the middle of the graph, you would have the more average or intermediate traits. So always remember with continuous variation, think of a wide range of the particular trait. So you have intermediates in the middle and then the extremes will be at either end. So just to finish off here, you can see clearly that skin color. So going back to skin color, so this is a good um, trait to examine when we're dealing with variation. So you can see with continuous variation, you go from the lightest individual, you have the intermediate colors, and then you have the darker individuals. So you have extremes and intermediates within the particular um, population. So skin color is a perfect example of continuous variation. Hopefully you have a better understanding of the different types of variation. So genetic variation, environmental variation, and also discontinuous versus continuous variation. So the next topic we're going to cover is genetic engineering. So stay tuned for that in the next video. If you found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe, like, and share. And don't forget to hit that notification bell.